So guys, welcome back to the channel. And as the title suggests, I bought another Defender. Guys, although the car looks the way it does, there's actually plenty to love on this car. So guys, let's start with the basics. It's a 2008 Defender 90 TDCI 2.4 with only 70,000 miles on the clock. Now, it's only had three previous owners. Now, underneath is very good condition and we have done a few bits already in the workshop. We've changed the hinges because they were uh, just worn. We've changed all the hinges and the mirror heads. Now the plan is to give this thing a really neat look without spending too much money, but make it look super refined, elegant, classy, a real Defender. Now, uh, you guys have seen a previous build on my channel way back where I did like a blue 110 Safari build. And I went all out and had this thing resprayed and gave it a real classic sort of guise. And I'm gonna sort of mimic that with a slight difference with this one here. Now, Khan's blue, which is this color, is arguably quite hard to style. I wouldn't think that a black roof, black arches would suit it, black sawtooth. I can't really go too modern with it because it's got a bit of a washed out heritage look to it. Now, the problem with this, is classic cars don't have metallic paint. So that makes it very difficult to try and style uh, in a classic theme when you've got metallic paint. So it's gonna be interesting to try and style this one, but I think I know just how to do it. So it's already been in the workshop and we've already rebuilt the front axle because the swivels uh, were looking a little bit worse for wear. Uh, this, the, the plan for this vehicle is to sell on. And if you guys are interested, do drop me a line. Obviously when you've seen what we've done, um, you can hit the email address below or call us, blah, blah, blah. We've rebuilt the front axle. We have changed the clutch assembly because it was juddering and we fitted some solid rear shafts. And of course we've given this thing a full fluid change, diffs, axles, transfer box, gearbox, full engine service, making sure this thing is absolutely top notch. Now of course this thing will travel on 70, blah, blah, blah. But uh, really, really smart this one. It's very straight, it's very original and I love the wheels. What do you guys think? <laughs> I don't know how these, we didn't fit these wheels, I promise. That's how it came with these wheels. They look to me like Discovery One Boost alloys wrapped in some rather worn general grabbers, but <clears throat> they've got to go. And obviously they give it a very timid look. Now we have pulled the fascias off and we've sent them to paint. And the plan for this thing is to have essentially a classic styled grille, a galvanized bumper. We're gonna cut some windows into it at the back to make this thing a car, fit bench seats. We're gonna change the interior, make this thing look super smart, but also give it all that refinement, like a short shifter, a clutch spring, a remap, just to make it feel nice on today's road. Um, but let's get into it. Guys, we've rebuilt the front swivels and we have also upgraded the front braking setup to a vented braking setup and this obviously allows the brakes to stay cooler gives it more stopping power and just makes it generally safer so we've already fitted a full vehicle hinge kit we had it painted body color and Khan's blue when it's painted is actually a really stunning color so it'd be nice to see this thing when it's got a bit of attention to the paintwork a bit of a machine polish real, real shine to this paint i think it's going to look wonders but we've painted the windscreen blocks painted the mirror heads fitted a full new hinge kit um, we just want to get this thing up to a base level first and then we can change things like the arches and the wheels. Now I have got, back at the workshop, a full palette of everything to get this thing sorted and the interior is going to be where this thing really shines. Now, as a 90 van, <clears throat> it's not too desirable I say, but I think we can cut in some, some of these side sliding windows. We're going to fit some bench seats in the back like the old traditional ones. First things, those wheels have got to go. but. Actually, I think first thing is we want to get this thing a nice wash, give it a bit of love, and then we'll take it back to the workshop.
So guys, it's back from the wash, but there's spill. <laughs> there's spill on. <laughs> so guys, we're back from the wash and it's certainly looking better, but I think there's even more to be done to this car. Now I have got a selection of parts just here. Um, the wheel arches, you cannot paint these flexible type ones. So we've had a set of paintable arches painted in the correct tarns blue. Uh, we're gonna start with the arches. We're gonna put the, uh, the side checker plating on. We're gonna do all the boring bits first, and then we're gonna do the front end and we've got these awesome set of wheels I can't wait to show you guys. So let's get straight to it, stop tearing this car down. So guys, now that we've got the car stripped down, it's time to build it back up again, even better than before. Now I've got a few upgrades here and a few bits and bobs that I want to talk to you about and how I'm going to be making this thing actually look the way that I want it to. Uh, so for the headlights, we've gone for a, a modern classic fusion. So I like the look of crystal headlamps, which I had before where there's no lens pattern. Um, they were like the upgrade before LEDs came about. I really like them, but obviously then you can't see at night. So I think these are the best of, the best of both worlds, it looks like a classic headlight, slightly smoked and there's an LED bulb inside. So you get the classic look, modern appearance, kind of a nice little blend of the two. Now for the grill, slightly controversial choice here, and I hope you'll kind of keep up with where I'm going with this. This is a non-AC car, so it has no air con, but I like the style with a Puma, when they have the bulge on the bonnet, I think when they don't have the AC shroud, i.e. the front is flat, uh, I think it looks a little bit weird. So I like the, the nose of the AC shroud. It gives it a nice little bit of muscle, which I quite like the look of. Um, and you can obviously just fit the shroud straight to this. I've had a genuine one painted here. Um, and then I've gone for a non-AC Nakatenga grill. Now, I've never been installed one of these. I like the look of it. Uh, the AC shroud has this slope over here and the, stay with me here. The AC Nakatenga shroud also includes this grill, but I don't like the look of it being too much. I like the non-AC Nakatenga grill on an AC shroud. Anyway, let's unwrap this thing. And this is metal, which is cool, because it'll gain that kind of patina as it ages. That's cool. I think it's gonna be, it's weird, but I think it's gonna look good. Once that is bolted down on here, 
That's gonna look so nice. And then of course, we have a Land Rover badge that's gonna rivet to it, so it keeps that heritage look. Like I said, this is all gonna be coming together. Might look a little bit weird now. Let's get on the car and uh, tell me what you guys think in the comments. I'm not liking it like now. I don't know, it's just not. Wait. It's not doing the vibes. Wait just yet. Wait for the vibes now. I will convert you. See, even Matt's not sure of this grill. I don't know, so, uh, like that, that. Trust the process. I feel like that should be recessed up, like underneath it. I know what you're saying, but this is obviously, we're taking it back. Rolling back the clock to the old classics. You had a press grill, proper. Yeah, fair enough. Maybe you're just too young to no, understand. We'll see what it looks like. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. It's there, I'm but just, just not sure. Grab the grill. Just not sure about your barbecue grill. <laughs> That's going to look so smart. Okay. Yes. Uh, um... Look at the vision coming together.
So guys, that front end is looking so much better. I know Matt, you were apprehensive about that grill and so was Leon, but I can really see it. We're waiting for the galvanized bumper, which should be here tomorrow morning. Uh, we've got the arches on, the paint match is perfect, which is amazing. And I'm starting to see what we initially envisioned. It's kind of, a, kind of a blend to that last 110, but with a little bit of a difference, because obviously, as I spoke about earlier, this is a metallic color. So we had to do a few more different things to try and tie this into a classic theme. This is what we're all excited about. Those wheels and tires have got to go, we all know that. And I have gone for the same ratio of tire that I fitted to the Safari 110. I will leave a link in the description below so you guys can check it out. It's a 255-85-16, as opposed to an initial 235. I don't know what they are. But a 255 gives it that taller, classic balloon look. They look quite big, and I've had the wheels painted in the same cons blue. So, They are wrapped in four, five brand new Toyo Open Counties, countries, countries. And they do look quite big, but they give it that really nice, classic kind of tall, skinny balloon with a modern tread pattern. Now the fronts are worn out on this, so these are gonna look super cool. We've already put spaces on that we had on the shelf when we rebuilt the front axle. I can't wait to see these on, because we're gonna get the whole image of what this vehicle's gonna look like, apart from the Dow bumper. Let's get these fitted. It's gonna look big, like tall, but I think this is the biggest size we can really get away with on no suspension lift whilst retaining all that without scrubbing but it will feel very nice on the road brand new tires and these are, i've got these fitted to our, our high capacity going anywhere. so i'll grab the wheel nuts
So good morning guys, it is the next day and we've had our delivery, we installed our galvanised bumper and it's looking so much better, it really sets off that front end. Uh, what else have you done Matt? Uh, masking and paint in the rear. We're masking, so it has a galvanised cross member this one. Uh, the previous owner just put a galvanised cross member on because it started to delaminate, done an excellent job. But then they did paint it black. Now we were going to redo the black covering, uh, but then I thought actually, because we've got this silver galvanised affair going on, it's all silver touches, and it is a galvanised cross member, I thought it might be quite nice. I did hunt through the cupboard and I found that we have some, some Zambesi silver. Now this silver looks very similar to the galvanised coating on the front or on the grill set there. So I think doing the cross member in this colour is going to be a really nice change and obviously it keeps it in keeping from any angle of the car. Uh, the bumper down is galvanised both front and rear. It keeps it that kind of symmetrical thing. So Matt's never painted before and I've whipped out all my old painting stuff because we haven't done this for a long time. We usually use Zach and uh, we're going to give it a go today and uh, how hard can it be? <laughs> so we're gonna mix up some Zambezi silver, put it in the old gum, and uh, paint this cross member in a silver, which is a very first for me, and I'm a slightly apprehensive to see how good it's gonna look, if good at all, but obviously if it doesn't look very good, we can literally just sand it back and then give it a coating of black, and uh, we can forget about the whole thing and I'll edit this out. <laughs> uh, so I think let's mix something up and get them out of the paint gun. That looks unbelievable. And it wasn't, it was quite a nice and easy, quick sort of package to do. And it's just given it a whole different look. I was initially gonna change the, the KBX style, the sports vents. So you can see the silver vents on the wing tops and the side. They now suddenly fit the whole design package which we're going for. I mean, the wheels and tires have just completely done absolute wonders. And it's given it that classic heritage look. Like I said, Khan's blue is slightly difficult because it's metallic to give it a classic appeal. I think we've absolutely nailed it. Now, we aren't finished with the car. This is the general look of what we're going for, but we've got so much more in store for this car. And uh, I hope that you've loved this episode of this kind of exterior design package. We've done the clutch, we've done the front axle rebuild. We've also changed the A-frame ball joint, we've put solid shafts in the rear. 
we upgraded the front to a front bre uh, vented brake setup. We put those side steps on, gal bumper, and all this package you see here. So guys, like I said, with the Puma, where you've got the bulge in the bonnet, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to have the AC shroud. It just gives it that continuity of that muscular lines that I, I think just really works with this car. Of course, this is a genuine unit. We painted up the headlight surrounds and the shroud in cons blue to give it this kind of seamless classic look and then hit it off with the non-AC Nakatanga shroud on an AC shroud because this would have continued down there and then it's just too much silver going on. I like the breakup of the blue in between. Those headlights look really cool. Not something we usually fit, but they give it that classic look. You can still see at night, they're way brighter. You already had the LEDs around it, the clear. I'm not, again, I'm not really a fan of the clear, but it all works together on this car. Looking super good. Now going towards the back, we've just painted the cross member. I mean, look at that wheel and tire package. I'm actually gonna change the wheel nuts on this to stainless steel, because I think just those few little pops of silver are gonna make this car really sing. <laughs> it was the right choice. The choices were either go with the original factory black chassis, paint it cons blue, which I did do previous on the Safari, but I think the silver really works nicely on this because we've obviously got this silver baseline, the bumper, the side sill, and then the cross member. I think just a full 360s car looks super sweet. On the uh, on the blue Safari, I was going to, oh, well, I did actually, I did all the cappings re -gouled. I'm not gonna do on this because I think it might be overkill. And I think this is just kept with that simplicity. And I think we just hone in on the details we've got. And of course, what we're gonna be doing in the next episode is focusing on the interior. Now, I've got a killer interior to fit to this and I cannot wait to show you guys what we're gonna fit. The Heritage mud flaps looking super nice on this. They're quite hard to get hold of, but uh, they look great. They just tie off with this classic look that we're going for. And suddenly I absolutely love this color. And it's not one that I've ever looked at before and gone, I really like Khan's blue because it's quite washed out, almost like Tonga green. And I think if you have a Tonga green, I think that look stamped onto it would look equally as good. Guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I've loved this one so far. And in the next episode, you can see this car change dramatically. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Do drop me a comment. Let me know what you think below. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, which is at Juice Motors. Please subscribe. We'll see you guys for the next interesting update.